voice in your speakers right now. That's us, Nick and Sean Thomas from the HQ Boys, taking the suck out of your Mondays from our own house with a new episode of That Rules, a weekly podcast where we talk about the stuff that we think rules. Uh, this podcast, as always, is brought to you by Espionage VR. If you go to espionagevr.com and use code HQ15, you're going to get 15% off some of the coolest video game shirts on the net, and you're going to look better than you've ever looked before. You get a Final Fantasy shirt just like me. So that's espionagevr.com, code HQ15 at checkout for 15% off. And this episode also bull. And this episode is also brought to you by Lux. If you go to LiveLux with two ease.com and use code HQ15, you'll get 15% off the easiest way to get every man in your life a great gift. You'll get the robe. You'll get the Manscaped Perfect Package 3.0. Nope. Not not the perfect package, not the whole thing. Don't quote me on that. Quote me on this. The lawnmower 3.0. <laughs> you'll get that for sure. And then you'll also get the crop preserver and the mat and the face mask and the bro hangover mask. pills. The bro mask and the hangover pills. You get all this for $76 when you use our code. That's a lot of shit, guys. It's like We're an saving un- you so much money. It's an unbeatable deal. Uh, but true. seriously, Lux, Lux is a brand new brand. Brand new brand, huh? They're a new brand. <laughs> and uh, they're taking a chance on us, so we want to give back to them. So please go to livelux 2 uh, And, oh, big, big thing right now. I don't know if it was happy. It happened the other week. They were doing a Black Friday sale. You couldn't use our code. But if you want to let them know, the HQ boy sent you. If you're in Twitch chat, exclamation point Lux. If you're on our YouTube video, down below. If you are listening on podcast services, also down below. There's a lot of ways to click that link so we get credit. And if you love us, you'll do that. And as always... Thank you, Delgado, for giving us the gear. We need to make great stuff for you. And normally when I say that, I'm talking about the cam link and the stream deck that we use at HQ. Literally could not run our camera, Big Nick's mic, or the stream deck. But now, actually doing the show from home, we got our key lights. We got our Wave 3s. It's like we li- they literally power the show, guys. So go get something from Elgato. Nick, I don't know. Who went who well, went first last week? But, w- but we've got a lot to cover before we get into this week's topics. Okay. We have a lot oh. to cover. I'm going to go shut my window because they decided to start construction right at this moment. So give me one second. Okay. So guys, my new favorite thing about doing this show from home is we have a screen set up where we can see whatever Big Nick is going to show us, but I can see that he's looking up magic cards right now. I'm and back. I don't know. <clears throat> Hey, Nick, I was talking, and I know you knew I was talking because you had your headphones on. Shut the fuck up, man. I'm back. Anyway, I see Big Nick looking at these magic cards, and I'm thinking, what if just stream that and no talk? We just watch Big Nick buy magic cards. That would be cool. Only if he spends at least $2,000. Don't. That's my my minimum. That's my threshold. He'll do that more. Uh, So, yeah, no, before we get into it, this is we're going to do a little bit of home... Uh, housekeeping, not homekeeping, but we're in our home, so it's kind of homekeeping. We can call it homekeeping. We'll call it home, the, home. the HQ boys homekeeping, but it's spelled home and then keeping is spelled with a Q instead of a K. HQ homekeeping. Okay. Um, last week we put out a new heads up video edited mm. by Bobbin, mm. uh, friend of the show, friend of us in real life, well. editing, <laughs> <laughs> editing some videos for us. But that is on uh, our YouTube, which is YouTube dot. Uh, com slash the HQ boys and we also have mm. another YouTube channel that maybe some of you don't know about so if you mm. go to youtube.com slash the slash the HQ boys and go to the little about section our gaming YouTube is linked there and you can watch uh, maybe a Fall Guys video Big Nick and I played Batman the Arkham uh, Arkham Asylum we're playing Arkham City right now so we got a couple playthroughs there mm. we cover any sort of like video game news uh, like presentations that like Xbox or PlayStation do. So you can kind of use our YouTubes to watch all of our videos that we put out when we put them out. Uh, maybe some of you didn't know about that. And, so I just figured I'd let you know. Most importantly, Screen Peak, our yep. monthly video game book club is over there. So, mm-hmm. you know, you guys are missing out by not showing up. So show up for the boys, you know? Yeah. And we've got, you know, without, without, uh, leaking too much we we do have a little bit of a release schedule for our youtube that's going to be more than just the podcast that you know and love so that uh make sure to go there turn on notifications i don't use youtube notifications maybe this would be a good time to start i'll turn them on for our own channel <laughs> um, but you can head there because you know 
between now and the end of the year, about a month from now, where there's going to be some good content that is different for us, but is stuff you guys have been asking for. So we're really excited mm-hmm. to to be letting you know about that. And the other thing is, you know, you might be watching this on YouTube. It looks really different. LA County went into a, oh, another sure. lockdown for a bit. So we're doing our shows from home now. Uh, we're going to be doing that rules on Mondays, like always Sean and I from our bedrooms across the hall. And then, uh, the HQ cast on Wednesdays, same schedule as everything, but we're going to be doing it sort of in this web based mode just to make sure that we're keeping everyone safe during these, uh, tough, really dark times because the government <laughs> sucks shit. And that's homekeeping with the HQ boys. Now I have an update from last week where we ah. talked about Christopher Nolan's movies. Mm. And I had gotten up through Inception and I had not yet watched Interstellar. Yeah. I had seen it before, but then, and Dunkirk. And I said I was going to get back to you because we touched a little bit on what was I, better. Yeah, I was thinking about Inception that. Inception or Interstellar. And I can say without a doubt, Interstellar for me is better than Inception. I prefer it. I've been working on making a ranked list of his movies, and I cannot place two of them. So I've got this really cursed notepad in my phone where there's two empty slots because I just can't decide which one is going where. Uh, it's between Memento and Dunkirk, but which it's tough because Memento's is second oldest movie, and Dunkirk mm-hmm. is his second most recent movie. So they're really hard to compare. They're really different movies, really different times, whatever. But I can promise you, for me personally, Interstellar way beats inception it's Mm. got it's got the sci-fi stuff it's got space stuff it's got dad stuff which always it's a very emotional movie and you know when you and i saw onward the pixar movie Mm. we both like i was like man that that movie's got a lot of dad stuff in and that always just like kind of hits close to home just because i'm I'm really close with my dad so like dad movies I feel like I just relate to, but this, this movie is, it's got some dad stuff in it. So I think emotionally and subject matter wise interstellar for me beats out inception. So that's for all of you who listen to me rave about the Christopher Nolan movies. That's my little, my little bookend to that subject until I see tenant in about two and a half weeks. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> so I, my, I'm almost positive. Yep. That my topic is yep. going to be a duo topic. Is it dragon quest? Spoiler alert, I guess. Yeah, it's Dragon Quest. <laughs> nice. I figured uh, it was going to be. Yeah, you know, I was I was boning <clears throat> up a little bit last night playing. Um, so do you, why don't, why don't you, no, you lead? Go. Well, no, no, no. I think you lead. And then the end of the, the whole back half of the show, she's going to be a DQ love fest. Okay. But what if I told you the first half of the show? <laughs> show is also kind of a duo topic it's tiktok Um, dude you like tiktok uh, i do like tiktok i Um, looked up yeah well okay you we could do tiktok and then and then dragon quest if you want yeah yeah, because how much is there really to say about tiktok that app is fucking nuts i've been told by my producers (laughs) to stop doing hand stuff Um, i can't okay really want to really want to i hear i i will i will talk i'll talk for a minute i need you to fix something on your end uh oh, we're getting we're getting in we're getting in the weeds here, boys. Need you to open up Logitech gaming software on your computer. Anyway, this is really good for for you podcast listeners. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I I know. I I just I know Nick Nick's Mister Fucking Hands over here, so his his webcam's tweaking tweaking. So Logitech gaming software. Click yeah. on the camera. Click yeah. on advanced, and yeah. then click on the camera control tab. Yeah, uncheck the focus one. Okay. Now, now put your hand. Au- now now your autofocus hand. is not on. Yeah. There we go. We're done. Apply. Very We're good. Okay. Now. All you podcast listeners, thanks for dealing with that for a moment. We're back. Hey, you know, this is just this is just the way of working from home, man. We just sometimes I gotta fix Nick's computer remotely. <laughs> um, okay, anyway. Let's talk about TikTok because I've been I've been really obsessed with TikTok recently. Yeah, I've me. Had, I've had a me. couple viral hits on TikTok. And that's good. And I was actually thinking about how you know when so there's a lot to talk about with tiktok but <laughs> when quarantine started and i yeah. had i made a couple tiktoks of the lo-fi beats i was making i had sort of a formula for what i wanted my tiktoks to be which was like yeah. hey i'm gonna show you how to make a lo-fi beat in under a minute like first you're gonna start off with this bird sound yeah and i made like three or four kind of fell off kind of fell off making music for a bit whatever we don't have to get into that but I do. I have so many beats 
that I could just like, I don't, I don't have to make TikToks just about the new beats. You know what I mean? I could just go yeah. and make TikToks about the older ones using the same layout. Mm-hmm. Um, and after, you know, talking to you about what you found out about like, you know, when to post, how to mm-hmm. post all that mm-hmm. shit, I've been thinking about it a lot more. Um, and even just listening to the lo-fi beats in the, in the pre-show of this show, I was like, man, I really should like get back into it because I hate that I'm not doing it. And I, I've talked about this on, on a few of the episodes, but maybe, maybe knowing that there is like the formula thing mm. but, yeah, that maybe, uh, maybe that will give me sort of the check boxes that I need and have talked about in the past, like the structure I need to actually make the TikToks that I want to make. You know what I mean? <laughs> Well, so not only that, but I've been doing, I mean, I've been going, I've been going deep because I'm really trying to go TikTok mode. I was, yeah. I was talking to somebody the other day, maybe Ian. Um, I, I know it was Zach, actually. <clears throat> I really, and I, I said it yesterday when we were doing Screen Peak, but like the way TikTok is like, TikTok is what YouTube used to be right now. Mm-hmm. And like mm-hmm. YouTube can still mm-hmm. be this, but like it is truly you can grow organically. I can't tell you how many TikToks I've seen. I'm sure you've seen them too, of people being like, "This is uh, whatever." Here's like a here's a thing. Like here, here's a story or whatever the TikTok is, and then the next TikTok is like, "Holy shit! I have fifty thousand followers now." Yeah. Like, and oh, I yeah. had th- and I had three hundred earlier. Yeah. Um. It like the explosion is just huge. Now I will say that there is, in my experience, not a lot of cross pollination from like TikTok to Instagram or whatever. Like I, I see so many like girls who have like 200,000 TikTok followers and you go to their Instagram and they got like 5,000 Instagram followers. Sure. Um, but maybe they're just not sending people the right way, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But something that I've thought about a lot recently, because I mean, I've done two TikToks in the last week. One TikTok has 5,000 plays. The other one has a thousand plays which are pretty low numbers on TikTok, but a lot more than like some dude commented on my TikTok about destiny. And, uh, I went and looked at his TikToks. He had posted like 20 TikToks and they all only had like a hundred views or something. Cause I thought maybe a five K was like the average, but it turns out you can hit a lot lower. So I think the trick is you, you gotta hop on there. I, there's obviously like, you know, time is a post or whatever, but I think you just gotta hop on the trends of these sounds And one thing that I saw that's like really fucking easy and it makes so much sense is duetting or just reacting to content because that requires like nothing of you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, definitely doing the custom, the custom TikToks like about how to like make a beat whenever are good. But I think that maybe that's something you have to switch to when you have the viewership. You know, we always kind of talk about like, what do you do to get big and then pivot? Mm -hmm. And I think, I think that that's kind of the, the trick. Cause like, just the I, I actually I literally have a notepad on my phone now of TikTok ideas. In fact, let me see. I wrote one. Oh, okay. I got to. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna run it through you. I, we're gonna workshop a TikTok live. How about this? Okay. So I, I I had two TikTok ideas. One was uh, it's like a reward, <laughs> and yeah. and the the text is gonna be playing my main after inting off roll. Okay. You know, yeah. so that's, that's like one, cause I'm, I'm, I'm deep on league talk. There's all yeah. these people on, on league TikTok who are just like crazy popular now. And I'm like, I could do it. I play league all the time. Then I was trying to think of, um, the, now I'm panicking cause I'm going to lose me job TikTok. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to think of the caption, something like when a new person starts playing league and they learn support, but that's the only role I play <laughs> or something. Mm, mm, mm. So, okay. But so that's because, you know, we watched this YouTube video and I feel like I've talked about him on the show before, but if you haven't check out Devin Nash on YouTube, he's a massive, uh, he's like a big business YouTuber, ex CEO of CLG and dig and whatever. And, um, he did a YouTube video about how to make YouTube videos. And one of the things was like, take trends of other industries or other games and apply them to your shit. So last night I'm sitting there thinking about league talk, seeing all these other fucking trends. And I'm like, how do I apply it to league? Like yeah. what's the cheat code there? Right. Right. So, and I, and I think with, with, you know, we've talked a lot about wild rift coming up. I think you're going to go fucking crazy, but you just got to be like the dude on there. But so right. I, all I'm saying is don't be afraid to sell out, do that no. shit. And yeah. then just, and then be like, here are my beats. Right. You know, Right. No, totally, totally. And, you know, the 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 blow up is 
insane. It's and insane. it's it's also like I because I use TikTok so much, <clears throat> I see a lot of very low view TikToks. Yes, but like I still feel like I want to support these kids when I see like that kid that was like, "Yo, what's up? This is my first TikTok. I'm going to be making gaming news, and I'm staying anonymous, and you can suck my dick, whatever." Like. That was just some like 13 year old kid that decided he wanted to make TikToks. And even though he wasn't big or whatever, I was like, man, this kid's like going out on a limb, maybe going out of his comfort zone, doing something he like loves. Mm. And then his second TikTok was like relevant news about the COD patch. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, he was like, I I wanted to know the follow up on that. Yeah. So the next day he put and it was funny because when I found that first one where he introduced himself and it was like extremely our humor and funny, like. It had no likes. I was the first person to like it, but I was like, man, I, I'm going to follow this kid because like he's taking a chance and I think it's genuinely funny. So I'll follow it. His next one was like, yo, here's five reasons why, uh, black ops cold war isn't very good. And it's like, everyone's only using the M five and it's bad. Like it's broken and the fucking, the multiplayer is pretty bad and zombies is pretty good for whatever reason. But he had these like kind of thoughtful, like this thoughtful bullet point list and I was like, man, even though I don't play COD, like this kid stayed true to his promise of his yesterday, work. which was I'm going to make gaming news, TikToks, whatever. Can we get and a live check on it? How, how much is he growing? My, my phone's over here. I don't know if I'll be able to find it quickly. Um, how many see. people you follow? Well, I'm going to just go to my likes and see if I can find the one of him being anonymous. Wait, just go to your go to, go to your found following. It's got to be faster, right? Wow. He okay. So he unfortunately still only has the two videos. The last one was five days ago. Okay. Uh, but he's got five followers, thirty-three likes, about four hundred plays on each video. Wow. That's the other thing too. TikTok has to have. Bow, like, wow. His name is Bowel Infection Sixty Nine. Mm, that's probably not doing too good for him. But no, I mean TikTok. TikTok really is like so, so, so big. I think that I feel like I'm I feel like I'm sounding like Gary V right now. But like, if you're not. If you're trying to be a content creator, if you're not an already established content creator and you're not trying to go hard on TikTok right now, I think you're doing yourself a disservice. For sure. I even think like that we as the HQ boys should be doing the stupid trends. 100%. Like not 100%. even It's like you said like we should make more original TikTok content. Yeah. Like not just posting our like <clears throat> me our uh social clips to it. But yeah. I like I even think we should just be doing the stupid fucking dances or whatever. Yeah. If if they're like silly enough. Like but yeah, I, I just see all these people like I don't even think we need to really like write like a show for TikTok. Yeah. I think that would do well. But it can be as easy as oh, they're fucking popping the balloon with water in it. Okay. Let's get a balloon. I I mean, dude, it it's literally insane how fast people grow yeah. on on TikTok and like I, I think the jury's still out on like how much you can do with that growth, but you can definitely do some shit. Like I, I was talking about this maybe on last week's episode, that kid, the TikToker who was playing with Tim and has like yeah, 2k yeah, subs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, like I feel like that's like as content creators, I feel like we try, I feel like, you know, when you think about streaming, right? Like you just think like, Oh, I'll just stream. I'll stream and then I'll get the viewers, but you have to like make, make content elsewhere so that when you're not live, you can grow. Yeah. And TikTok is just like, it's just, it's just free money. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Like, Oh yeah. Like, and I also think <clears throat> that doing the stuff we were talking to Bob and earlier, like doing the stuff on TikTok, it, it forces your brain to work in a different way. You know, we talked a couple weeks ago about, um, how it's easier for you to create when there's like a rubric, right? Yeah. And TikTok is like the same way. Like you have the trend and then you just have to think like, how do I make that work for what I'm doing? Yeah. Um, and, and TikTok is a really weird beast because you just, it's, I guess it's kind of like YouTube in a way where like, you don't know what's going to do well. And, and right. you also don't know like my my destiny tiktok that was an idea i kind of had in passing and then i didn't do it and you were like dude you should really post that and then i did it and it got like 5k views you know what i mean Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so uh, like it it really i think it's one of those things where you don't want to get discouraged but you have to like work smart at it you know for sure i um, am and it's just great content it just makes me it's something to do all the time (laughs) right yeah no like it i definitely don't think it's a very healthy app or at least i don't use it in a healthy way. I just checked and I, in the past two days, no, check. I don't know. I've got 12 and a half hours on TikTok, which is too much. 
and a lot of that is like late at night. But the reason is, is you because just scroll forever. It, it's just bite sized. Like that yeah. when you when you say it's the next YouTube, it really is because everyone's attention span is like dwindling yep. and getting smaller and smaller. And TikTok is just like perfectly catering to that and just giving people the little tiny things that they want. Because when I'm laying in bed, I'm like, okay, well, I got to do a thing in a half hour. Mm. I could watch an episode of anime. Or yeah. I could watch yeah. 30 to 50 TikToks. This is how I feel about movies, by the way. I'm getting more bang for my buck doing TikToks. Yeah. And it, it's not healthy. Like two nights ago, I like couldn't sleep because I had just burnt my eyes so hard on TikTok for like three hours. You said you had done 12 hours in the last week? 12 and a half, yeah. I did two and a half. Yeah, no, I'm... Dude, That's you're nothing. Lot. You're nothing I compared to me. I felt like I was using it a I'm lot. I'm built. No, I'm built different. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. It's really bad, but it is, it's exactly what people want. Like, yeah, yeah. there's going to be, there's always going to be an audience for YouTube. YouTubers are always going to have their fan base, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. as just this like introduction to who you are as a creator or something, TikTok yeah. is the perfect platform because it's in people's, I, YouTube is in people's pockets too, but TikTok is like yeah. the first thing people are yeah. going to for just like quick whatever. And it's so yeah. easy to then go to someone's page yeah, and and just instead of watching what you, you let's say you go to someone's YouTube that you find out and that you find out about and you go there and they've all their videos are 20 minutes. and You're like, OK, well, I'll watch one. And you're a few yeah. minutes in. And you're like, ah, this isn't really it. Or you like it, but it's 20 minutes. You could have gone to their TikTok page and watched mm. 20 different things they made. It's just like mm. it's way better for like uh, kind of hooking people into you as a creator. And now hear me out. He yeah. You want to know the next thing that's going to be really big. Instagram reels. Yes. Yeah. I like, know. like, and so here's, here's my personal hang up with Instagram reels. I really want to do it because I've just seen, because Instagram reels is the same issue. It's, it's like TikTok on a deeper level where there's just not enough content for people. So the content that's on there, like goes fucking nuts. My concern is like fucking up my Instagram where I'm just like posting these like fucking TikToks on my feed. Yeah, right, right. You know? But then just make Sean Thomas reels. Yeah. Two accounts. Do you think the two accounts thing works on Instagram like it does on YouTube? Probably the same because you get like classified as like a gamer or whatever. Yeah. Maybe maybe I should. Maybe maybe that's the Maybe note. I got to make a reels account. Um, maybe. Oh, well, okay. I don't have to. I've got some ideas. But yeah, go ahead. <laughs> But but I also feel like maybe having like an install base of like a couple thousand followers is maybe better because I don't know about I don't actually know about how uh, about the org organic growth. I of Instagram so reels. so I some people have hit me up mm -hmm. before and said like, hey, you came up on my explore page and they show me that the HQ boys are on their explore oh. page, but oh. they don't follow the HQ boys or like hadn't until they saw that. Mm -hmm. I imagine because you have people interacting with your regular page, if you started mm. posting reels and interacting with it, and if I was interacting mm. with it and the HQ boys and whatever, it would, mm. that would end up on people's explore pages. Mm. And then they would be like, Oh, that's Sean. Why didn't mm. I see that? Oh, this is a different account. Mm. They DM you. Hey, I just found your reels account. Ha ha. Mm. <laughs> like whatever. And then it, it just yeah, grows it, from there. It could also be an interesting way to just see, like just to test, like, Oh yeah. Can can you grow organically? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. Really interesting. Really interesting. That's true. Um that reels. <laughs> that reels. Wow. That's our new show everybody. That reels. Yeah, TikTok is fucking nuts. If you think TikTok is like stupid or like for kids or something or like if you've got this weird like boomer hang up about it, <laughs> I'm not even trying to like sell it to you as like you got to dedicate 12 and a half hours a week to watching it, but it it truly is like good content there's a lot of there's a lot of misses sure yeah. but there's some like funny shit on there and it just like it is so catered to you oh yeah it's, it is insane yeah, which yeah i mean i was just gonna say it's it's very informative because i learn a lot of like maybe it's like fun facts about whatever it's like these six crazy things you didn't know about antarctica i got the other day and whatever um so it's really got everything i unfortunately have like cursed my my algorithm and I'm getting like, this is how the fifth dimension works and there's beings and whatever. And it's like, well, it's cause I liked yeah. one thing that I thought was funny. <laughs> and now they think that I think yeah, that the, like, I'm really in the fifth up. dimension and whatever. And like the hollow earth and 
but but those are still funny to me. Like I still enjoy that content, but it it takes a little bit away from some of the more informative stuff, which I still get. And yeah. it it just like you know, there's they've got kindergarten teachers on there talking about how they teach children. I'm like, that's interesting. I didn't know that's how that worked. And I follow a lot of music people. Obviously, I follow a lot of gaming people. Just yeah. anyone that I think makes kind of like quirky, funny content. Mm. That just there's. It, it is unmatched in the the amount of different genres of shit there is on there. And yeah. you just get it all at once. Definitely bad for my brain. My brain's mush. I and I'll admit to that. But it's yeah. it is good. Yeah, no, I, I, I really like I'm a massive advocate for TikTok, especially the way I've just seen it like change. I mean, bro, fucking Nico yeah. was like she was like pretty big on Twitter. Yeah. But like I mean she got signed a hundred thieves off of TikTok. Oh yeah. Like Oh yeah. And, and like and that's the thing she didn't know, bro. She just did a little dance. And then yeah. that thing just went through the fucking roof. Um yeah. the TikTok I watched last night was like a girl told a story about her mom like basically she's like, "Oh, me vibing in bed with my dad. He hears a knock on the window. He opens the window. My mom's standing there covered in blood." And then then that TikTok had like 15 million plays or something like that. And then she gained like 50,000 followers. And it was it was like some actually kind of dark story about how her mom had like a drinking problem, whatever. Yikes, uh, dude. But like to me, when I was scrolling through last night, I was like, oh, you can still do it today. Like you could make a TikTok today that just like that blows just your shit up. Mm-hmm. There's this other mm-hmm. girl, uh, I forget her name, it's like Hercules something. She got signed to Dignitas off her TikToks. Wow. Like, and there's there's just so many people that I see do it. Something else I see people do on TikTok, I don't know if this is good or not, but uh because I follow like a lot of gamers, they will stream on TikTok when they're live on Twitch. Because I think when you're live, you pop up on people's feeds more, mm. and like the hope is like to redirect to their Twitch page. But so what? Um, they've just got the phone on a stand pointed at them, mm-hmm. and it yeah. says like, "Go to my Twitch to see this or whatever." Yeah, it's just like live on Twitch now. I mean, they they wow. read the Twitch chat, whatever. Um, I was seeing, I've seen a lot. I get a lot of like uh, meta TikToks, but, like how to do well on TikToks. I That's have to cool. do well on TikTok. And um, one of the things is like, you need to be going live on TikTok. Hmm. I'm like, okay. Um, I think that's, I think we've, we've probably TikToked enough <laughs> about TikTok. Yeah, um, I've got a lot of ideas I got to execute on. But that's, that's the thing really is like, you just got to like pull the trigger and not just you, me too. Like I, I think there's a lot of stuff that I'm like, oh, I should really do this. And then I just like forget. That's why the other night before we went out to do the HQ cast, I was like, give me a second. I need to yeah. do this Blackpink TikTok while I'm thinking of it. <laughs> right, you know? right, right, right. Um, but no, I yeah. mean. Well, stay TikTok's- tuned, everyone, for the HQ boys on TikTok. We already do have a TikTok. If you go to TikTok at the HQ boys, just with an S spelled the way we spell it, um, there's uh, some shit on there. And, you know, if we can if we can light a fire under our ass, we'll, there will be more shit on there for you. Yeah. God, I fucking love TikTok. Okay, my my topic, my TikTok. Another thing we love. My TikTok. Yeah. Is Dragon Quest Eleven? <sighs> Have we like actually talked about this game? I feel like no. No, not not publicly. This is like this is like our dirty little secret about how much we love. It's Dragon not dirty. Quest. It's kind of dirty the way I love it. Um. <laughs> so, hold on. Well, okay. Um, I have to hold. hold. Okay. No. So to anybody, I got to, where do I even fucking start with this game, man? So, uh, I've never played a Dragon Quest game before. Uh, the, the Amiibo is so good. I've got, I've got a wall over here. Yeah, I can't wall show you. I got, I've got a lot of slimes up here. Um, I've never, this is the first Dragon Quest game I'd ever played. And it's because Nick and I have this sickness where any game that comes to Nintendo Switch, we got to at least think about it. Oh yeah, we gotta we gotta get in there and obsess the over it mm-hmm. and never buy it. Yep. But Dragon Quest Eleven S just got me hooked, and I forget what happened. I think I had Googled something or whatever. Somehow I came across Tim Rogers' thirty-minute video essay on Dragon Quest Eleven S, which so is actually maybe one of the best videos on YouTube. Dude, so I was thinking the other day. I I rarely rewatch YouTube videos. I have rewatched that video because it brings me like unparalleled joy. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with it, please, uh, it's on Kotaku's channel. But if uh, I think if you just look, I think if you look up Dragon Quest Eleven S, 
on YouTube, it's the first video that comes up. Um, but Dragon Quest is like, how do you even put this into words? Like it is the nicest game I have ever played. Like it, the game is so the, uh, I'm, I'm literally beside myself. I've talked about on the HQ cast, how much I love Dragon Ball Z. And obviously these are like maybe a little semi related because Akira Toriyama also did the art for this game. But whenever I think about Goku or I see Goku or Vegeta, I just a little, little spark of joy in me. I'm like, man, that's awesome that that exists. And it's the same thing with Dragon Quest XI S. When we were watching the Xbox presser from a while ago and they announced that Dragon Quest XI S was coming to Game Pass, I was like, holy shit. Like, this rules so hard. And whenever I, I, I was just on the Epic Game Store the other day and I saw a big banner, Dragon Quest XI S coming to Epic Game Store, I was like, holy shit. I'm so ecstatic. And I remember finding out that Jair had played Dragon Quest XI, and I was yep. like, wow, this is just so good. But it, in a way, it feels like Yakuza to me, where, like, it's our little secret. Because, like, it is, you know, Dragon Quest isn't big in the West, and the game is right. huge. And right, that was right. one of the things that, like, kind of kept us off it, is, like, this game's, like, 150 hours. Like, yeah. when could I ever play this game? Yeah. But watching that Tim Rogers video, I mean, first of all, maybe like a Tim Rogers fan for life, but just the way he talked about the game with, with such reverence and such, like he, he made it seem not scary. He made it seem like the parts of it that were, that were bad or scary are actually the best parts of it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, dude, last night, you know, we pretty much every day, me and Nick drive home from HQ and I'm like, you think you ever thought about Dragon Quest 11 S <laughs> he's like, yeah, moments e ago, every day. <laughs> and, uh, Last night, the internet went out of our house. Surprise, surprise. Happens all the time. And I was like, you know what? This is a fucking sign. A sign from the heavens. I have to boot up Dragon Quest. And immediately, you're greeted with the the recap of the story from that point. And, and by the way, the recap is like in depth. It's like, it was like four pages or something. Wow, okay. And, uh, you know, it just tells you everything that went on. You get back in the game. I guess like menus were maybe a little, I had to remember where certain things were, sure. but immediately I, I've got my bearings in the story. I'm mm -hmm. running around. I'm seeing the beautiful world. I'm hearing the music. And I was just like, oh, I'm going to go battle now. Maybe, maybe this will be where it turns sour for me. Nope. Go to the battle. Whoop some ass. My guys go dun, 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 and they're all fucking happy. And I'm like, holy shit, man, this game's so good. And I wanted to just immediately get in bed with my switch and just like keep playing, but I started to fall asleep mm. uh, because the game is so peaceful. There's like, it no, really is. Yeah. There's no stress about the game. Yeah. Um, I, I really can't say enough good things about it. And if you, I think it was like maybe kind of a hard pitch to people because it was like 60 bucks on the switch was the best version of the game at the time. Yes. But now with it coming to game pass, like five bucks, 10 bucks a month. And you can just like play this shit out of this game. That is just so good, dude. It, it, it honestly is so good. I haven't played it in a little while, and I told you it's because I I just kind of have this mental block where I'm like, oh well, am I, is it going to be tough for me? Am I going to forget some stuff? But I was watching you play it uh, before the show. I knew exactly where everything in that city was, and yeah. I could probably I could probably walk you through every city I've been to and be like, the church mm -hmm. is there, the thing is there, there's a quest mm -hmm. over here. You talk to this person there to unlock the thing. The boss is at the end, whatever, and. Like I said, like, so the, for those of you that don't know, the game is like seriously over a hundred hours long and there are points that I have found throughout the story. I'm a little further than Sean is, but there are mm. points where it like almost makes sense to take a little bit of a break if you feel like you need to. Yeah. Um, like I got, I, I know that when I boot the game back up, I'm going to be at a point where, yeah, so are you. Should we? We're, we're both going pixel mode. Me and Nick yeah. got a reset pixel mode. Oh. oh Am I my fixed? Light, my lighting's all screwed up. Did I fix it? Yeah. Sorry, everyone. Good. Technical difficulties as we transition to work from home. But there are points in the game uh, where that are that are like a pretty um, a pretty good point to take a little bit of a break if you need to. Like if you can't dedicate a hundred straight hours to one game you want to play some other stuff mm. you can stop whenever you want because of the 
the recap feature that when you boot the game back up, they t- one of the characters like tells you the story and just mm. catches you up to speed. But I just got to a point where like the whole like a uh, even bigger part of the map that I did not expect to be oh revealed. Like it's not like a spoiler or anything because like you basically just get a boat and they're like mm. you can just go. And I was mm. like, holy shit, it's so fucking big. And then I took a wow. little bit of a break, was doing some other stuff, whatever. So I know when I get back, it's going to be as though I'm starting like a part three to mm. the game. Because this is like the, the second time that there's been a break that feels like a natural like, okay, I just did that section and now I've done this section. And now I'm moving into this like bigger section. Mm. So I, I'm looking forward to whenever I get back to it. But it, it is something that I just like constantly thinking about it i think hero's the best fucking dude i love all the little characters and like the art is excellent because it's just fucking dragon ball art and it's so peaceful and the music like the music is always happening and the way that the switch version works is it got the orchestra right Mm -hmm. because that is that Mm -hmm. was that the thing where they didn't have Mm -hmm. that on the playstation Mm -hmm. and it's it's so brilliant and i never get sick of it I know, and I so I was looking at the subreddit the other night, and I saw somebody saying something about like, oh, you know, the <clears throat> the you know the producer really phoned it in. It was only f- uh, it was only four, it was only eleven songs or something. Yeah, and I was like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Play those eleven songs on loop yeah. until I die. Dude, and and so if you haven't listened to the music, it is it's this like kind of concert band orchestra thing, like classical music. And yeah. in Sean, sometimes I have to take Sean's car to go do stuff, and instead of going through the hassle of like connecting my phone, phone to Bluetooth everything. and like listening to fucking Young Thug or whatever, I just put on the classical station, and it feels like I'm going on my own little Dragon Quest through East LA <laughs> in Dude. Sean's car. It is so, it is so good. And like, I, I, I am never going to do as good of a job of selling this thing as Tim Rogers did. So yeah, like, we really, please, you got to watch that. You really, really, really have to watch it. And it's funny because you see a 30 minute YouTube video and you're like, no, <laughs> yeah. I won't be doing that. Yeah. But I remember, so it's actually as when I first started talking to Owie, I went to her house or her her hotel. She's staying at a hotel in Irvine, and uh, I just had my fucking iPad with me, and uh, we were like going to bed. I mean, I'm talking. I've been talking to this girl for like two weeks, and we're going to bed. And I'm like, hey, do you mind if I watch a YouTube video? And I just watched this 30 minute YouTube video on Dragon Quest, and I immediately texted Nick and I sent him the link, and I was like, dude, you have to watch it. I know the guy is a little silly, and it's a 30 minute video, but like, please watch it. And and I had actually stopped halfway through because I fell asleep. Yeah. And the next day you're like, yeah, I watched that whole video. Like I'm obsessed now. <laughs> right. And man, Tim Rogers being a little silly is definitely an understatement. That man is a gift from God and we love him. <laughs> but I was also worried that it was going to be like a spoiler video. I was like, no way I'm going to watch 30 minutes. Like I already don't watch yeah. the minute oh, long teasers yeah. for videos. That was but he does too. it. Yeah. He does it in such a way that there's no spoilers. Like he shows yeah. some of the gameplay and whatever, but as someone that hates seeing like anything about content I'm going to consume, whether it's a show or a movie or a book or a game or whatever, his 30 minute video, which is, I just looked it up. It is the first thing that comes up on YouTube. If you just type in Dragon Quest 11, it's called the Kotako review. It is like, it will, it will sell the game so well that you will, before even playing the game, think it is the best game. Yeah. Well, because it is is definitively. He he did two 30 minute videos. Yes. He he did. He did it for the PS4 version and then he did it for the 11S. So we had watched the 11S version and then I watched the 30 minute version of the PS4 one. I was like, Nick, you got to watch this one too. (laughs) Like it's that good. I I can't believe you haven't talked about going to Japan when it was the biggest fucking thing in Japan. Yeah. So something I will forever be jealous of. Yeah, well, but here's here's a spoiler alert. It, it's it's always the biggest thing in Japan. It but that even, they you said that when you were leaving, they were about to transition to some other stuff. They were about to transition that cafe, but like oh, oh, oh. but yeah. So I went to I, I can't believe I haven't talked about that. So I went to this Dragon Quest cafe in Japan, and they gave you they gave you steam buns that looked like slimes. You got yeah. themed drinks. The whole yeah. place playing yeah. Dragon Quest music. They got the videos on the screen. It was like. It was fucking heaven. Yeah, and dude, and everywhere, every gotcha store, every video game store, everything. 
Dragon Quest fucking everywhere. I literally have this is when you need the Elgato, the Elgato app, the Epic Cam to show what's over here. But I mean, I got I got slimes up the freaking wazoo. You can see them in your mirror behind you. So we. Got oh, 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 sick, sick, sick. <laughs> um, yeah, I got this little slime cup. I did a Dragon Quest VR thing. It's like it's the biggest fucking thing over there. Like Final Fantasy is. Sean got me this people. jade for my birthday or for Christmas. There is also a convenience store out there that's Dragon Quest themed. There's this drag. There's a convenience store called Lawson's, and this particular one in Akihabara has like when you walk through the door, it has a Dragon Quest <laughs> noise. And when wow! You, when you ring out, it's the level up noise. It's like wow! It is fucking oh, cool, man. man. Um, so yeah. good. Yeah, and honestly, I think going there kind of uh, not solidified it. Like it like emboldened. My reinforced word for it, yeah. yeah. It like it just made it so. Did it? I feel I like we just keep twice. saying it's good, but it is good, dude. Like okay, I don't. So, so let's 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 break down. We'll 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 do the Tim Rogers light of things that are actually really great. The okay. first thing, yeah. The cast of characters yeah. are so good. So they so all good. they all feel like your fucking friends. Yeah, like you just want to see them succeed. Yes, the music is amazing. Yeah, the world is beautiful, even on the Nintendo Switch. I've, I'll yeah. never forget how bad the skybox looked in Fire Emblem Three Houses. Mm-hmm. Looked like complete shit. Mm-hmm. Dragon Quest is like it looks really fucking good. I I am am known for not like really caring about photo mode in games, mm-hmm. especially compared to Sean. I in the one of the first towns you go to, I just had to stop and take a screenshot of my Switch because of how mm-hmm. beautiful and like big and open this little town looked. Yeah. Um, trying to think of other things that are really good. Uh, well, the, the recap game, mode. The recap mode is unreal. The game is deep, but not intimidating. Yes. Like, like it's got a cool skill tree, and you can like figure out the skills. You can respec really cheap if you don't like what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, I hate crafting in games. Mm. Just like I think it's like tedious and cumbersome, and I just like I'd rather just play the game instead of like craft and tailor the thing to my play style. Like I'd rather just like play the game and experience the story but Mm -hmm. i even like crafting in this game they like made it fun and cute and like easy to understand the uh the fun size forge is like yeah it's like a fun mini game to craft Mm -hmm. yeah Mm because i I definitely get what you're saying in a lot of games crafting is like just a thing you have to do like go in your inventory like press a button but the fun size forge is like a game you have to like make sure you forge it right and if you do a good job it comes out better yeah um it's it's really really neat um, uh, you've got options, which is one of my favorite things about the game. If you want to play in 2d mode, you can play in 2d mode. If you want to have English voices instead of Japanese voices, you can do that. If you want to have, um, the polyphonic music instead of the orchestra, you can do that. Um, it, and I'm actually really interested to see what's going to happen when it comes to PC. Like if they'll add more stuff in terms of like graphics and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so one I of really my favorite, can, yeah, go ahead. I was just, I really can't say enough good things about it. Yeah. One of my favorite things that um, Tim Rogers said in his video was that Dragon Quest two people in Japan because he he had played it when he was living in Japan. So he really got to experience it on a whole different level. But like when it came out being in Japan, whatever. But he said that people view Dragon Quest as like their bedtime story. Yeah. And that really is the case. Like Sean said, it's a really chill game, like really nice. Everything in the game is really nice, but it really does feel like. Like, you can just boot up the game and, like, everything is good. Like, even though you got to go fight some slimes and whatever, it's, like, the music is good. It just is a very, it's a nice experience. And it it is a good thing to just, like, do maybe at the end of your day. You just want to, like, run a little quest for a second and then go to bed. And it's, it that is a great way to end your night. I have recently been not against, but, like, I haven't been doing as many side quests in video games because I feel yeah. like a lot of times they're like not rewarding, kind of just like time killers. Last mm-hmm. night I deliberately did two side quests. In fact, to your point about remembering where things were, I went to I went back to the hot hot spring place. Mm. Yep. And I knew exactly how to like maneuver through this building. That's like kind of confusing your first time there. Um, I wonder what it is about the game that makes it so easy to remember. Do you think it's just because you and I love it so much that like it could Deep down, be. we are internalizing that stuff and not doing that in other games. Or does the game, is it just like simple it's, at it's, its core? I think it's simple. I think it's memorable. Uh, 
and I and honestly the map system's pretty good too. Yeah. Um but what was I gonna say? Um You did side quests. I, I was you doing side quests. Spring, yeah. I was doing side quests and they were like actually fulfilling. Like mm. I, I made a ring for a guy and so it was like fun to like make the ring and yeah. get it just right and then go yeah. deliver it to him and like the text is so worthwhile reading. It's like it's just so fucking good. And to me, the reason I was so excited to get it on the Switch was that I could do these little bite sized things anywhere. Now yes. with the way the world is no one's doing any bite-sized things anywhere except for their home. Um, but uh, like with, I think this is actually a perfect time to do this episode because I think when does it, does it come out like next week? Dragon Quest 11 I forget. I don't know. PC. When does it come out? Um, it gets released. Oh, uh, it, oh, I can't find out. I'll keep looking. Um, but I, I just feel like, it's it's one of those things where like you and I are like such fanatics about it, and I think it's been difficult to get other people on board because mm-hmm. I think you literally have to watch the Tim Rogers video, December fourth, yeah. Jay Z's De- birthday, dude. December fourth, it's coming to Xbox Game Pass, Xbox One. Wow, Billy has to play it on his Xbox. <laughs> um, dude, December fourth. You know, so by the time this episode posts, we're gonna is, get we're getting the <clears throat> Dragon Quest Eleven S clicks early, boy. It is. It is. Listen. Face value seems like an intimidating game. It's a JRPG. It's one of the, it, it was literally Dragon Warrior was like the first JRPG or whatever. Mm. It's a long fucking game. It's on the PlayStation, on the Switch, on the Xbox, on going to be on Game Pass, whatever. Mm. But it's, it isn't as big of a feat to tackle. It is like, it is just, you were rewarding yourself by playing it. What's the thing? What's the TikTok that you like? <laughs> it's like a reward. <laughs> That's playing Dragon Quest. Like it. It is no, it's no stress. It's not yeah. a lot of work. It's just, it is wholesome. It is a hundred percent just nice to you the whole time. I yeah, just, I, I can't, I, I, think, I want I th- hair like the guy, dude. I'm like obsessed. <laughs> I just want hair like his. Yeah. And, and honestly, like I would love more people to, to play it so that we had more people to just be in love with. To fanboy about it. You know what else you and I like? Well, yeah, mm-hmm. go ahead. Uh no no you go. It's Dragon Quest Builders. Dragon Quest Builders is like Which I think we could do like a pre post show that rules two right now about Dragon Quest Builders one and two. Actually yeah that is that is a that rules two. Dragon Quest Builders one is a game I played the ever living fuck out of on my PS Vita, and uh, I had a great time. That game runs at like twelve FPS. I was running around building shit like crazy. I was spending <laughs> hours in India. I would wake up at 3 a.m., five hours before anyone else got up, and on my Vita, just demolish a building, rebuild it. It was so fun to, like, make these rooms for these characters. I think that was – I. this is probably blasphemous to say. I like Dragon Quest Builders more than I like Minecraft because of the NPC element. It felt yeah, like I was, that's like – not blasphemous. It's just you. It felt okay. like I was taking care of people, sure. you know? And uh, Dragon Quest Builders 2 was like that, but on steroids <laughs> because mm-hmm. you can you can glide, which you can't do in the first one. There's like more building materials, more types of buildings you can make. <sighs> that game is so fucking good. Dragon Quest Builders 2 is insane, and Tim Rogers also has a video about it that is excellent, and you should watch. I got I – got, I, I'm not going to say I got far in that game because I did not get far, mm-hmm. but I spent so long – making things like perfect the way i wanted them to be made and it it like it's just that game is like i think he even says it's like an ever ever living gobstopper like you can just do so much for so long you can go as deep or not as deep as you want you like these games really just let you play them the way you want to play them and especially dragon quest builders man like especially that and like you know i got to a point where i'm in this kind of in-between world like you, you basically go to these worlds, save the people and, you know, by building them shit and then you go to like a different world, save the people. But there's these in between worlds where that's like more permanent. And I just spent so long. I spent like weeks there it just because that was what I wanted to do. I just wanted mm-hmm. to like make sure that the permanent part of the game was like mm-hmm. perfect. And I was like, mm-hmm. everything was so good about it. And it, it, these games are games you can just like put down, go play some other stuff and come back to whenever you're ready. And it's mm-hmm. like you never left. Mm-hmm. I will say I that I want to play it so fucking bad. <laughs> at oh. some at some point the Switch version I feel like bottoms out. Like it's oh, like it's, kinda, it's a little framey. It gets a little rough. But I it's to like, go. I'm which pretty I interested love. in playing it on PC because it would probably run so well. Maybe that'll come to Game Pass. Holy moly. 
Wow. Honestly, true. I didn't even think about the implications of this. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, my God. If that comes to fucking Game Mental. Pass. Mental. Dude, Game Pass is crazy. I feel like I feel like Game, Game Pass got to be that rules, and I don't even really use it that much. I Well, I I'm, I'm probably going to do a, that rules pretty soon on Forza, which is Game Pass game. Wow. That's heat. That's fucking heat. Man, how good is dragon quest dude and then they put the heat like it's so good they put hero in smash brothers i know what more can we say about it it's so good it's so good i just fucking love dragon quest and i'm I'm already thinking of the thumbnail for this video oh it's so good if you're interested at all download the demo this is the best part we didn't even talk about this part. oh my god the demo (laughs) how do we not talk about this part the demo is 10 hours or something of the game. It's insane. Yeah. You could just play so much. Like that's, that is how long the game is, is that you're not even like really scratching the surface, but please don't take that as like a, a red flag because it isn't. Yeah. It's Man. amazing. And so the, the demo for dragon quest builders, you get to play through the entire first Island, which is yeah. a long time. Probably oh, yeah. like, probably oh, yeah. like 40 hours worth of content Yeah, for, for free. Dude, and the dragon quest demo. And the Dragon Quest X demo, now Nick and I downloaded it before we had done any amount of research, before we were like excited at all, and uh, we didn't really like it, to be honest. I was like, ah, not really what I thought it was going to be, whatever. Then we watched this Tim Rogers video and got re-hooked and played we saw the it. light. We, we bottomed this demo out. Did you actually get to the to the purchase screen? Yeah. Uh, how About how far in is it? Like 10 hours or so? I think it was like eight, Mm-mm. maybe more, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe 10. I don't know if there's a way for me to find out because I might not have the demo installed anymore, but it, uh, you, you basically, you, you do a bunch of shit in the game. You're like playing forever. And then you get to a, uh, this like Canyon that you have to traverse and it's like, Hey, just, you know, if you want to keep going, visit the eShop first and buy the game. And I was like, well, yeah. fucking duh, I'm going to do that. Like, I decided that five hours ago. <laughs> Yeah, I was no, just doing seriously. the demo to see how long it was. Like I, seriously. I didn't make my decision at the end of the demo. I had made my decision way earlier. The demo does not yeah. need to be as long as it is, but it is so kind of them to to give you that much. And it's even called. Wait, is the builders demo called the like deluxe the demo? Because the jumbo, the demo jumbo. Or something. Yeah, right. Yeah, they they really just like, and that's the thing. The, these people are already being nice about the demo. The game then is nice to you about everything. Like no no part of it. Is bad. It's the opposite of Dark Souls. Yeah, but but I, more rewarding. Yeah, it's kind of like a reward. No, I yeah, I feel you so much. It? I I can't believe we didn't talk about the demo. The demo is like, in like to me, a lot of developers won't give you a demo because it's like you know maybe the game's not long enough, maybe it's not enough content, or the demo is yeah. like so shallow, whatever. Square Enix just like kind of throws their dick on the table and they're like, look, play play a shitload of this game, and like if you don't like it at the end, then don't buy it. But like, yeah. pretty sure you're gonna like it. Yeah. Um, it's just so fucking good, man. I could, man. I could literally, I could keep talking about this forever. Uh, but we probably should not do that. No, um, we should just play it. I agree. I mean, bro, I got it. I got booted up right now. I'll, I'll just, there. I'll stream after this post show. This is actually great post show. I'll stream it to Big Nick, and yeah. he can. We can be in the corner talking. Nice. Um, I like it. Well, everybody, that was this the first episode of That Rules From Home. Please let us know if there's any technical difficulties, things that you didn't like, things that we can work on. We're new to this shit because True. we started all of this at the beginning of the pandemic, which is insane. I was thinking mm. about that the other day. We literally launched in April. I know. I know. Um, but um, as always, if you want to support the show, please go to espionagevr.com and use code HQ15. Um, I think he's doing a Black Friday sale right now. Maybe That's he has cool. a better. Maybe he even has a better sale than us. But Metal Gear Solid three, four shirts are fucking sick. Go mm. cop them for the boys. Mm. Um, please go to Lux LiveLux dot com. Big Nick, you still there? I'm not. I'm not seeing the the sponsors pop up. My, my boy, he might be asleep. His screen's not moving. LiveLux.com. You can use code HQ15. Uh, Like I said, best place to get all your gifts for everybody in your life. That's a guy or a girl that wants a product called the Bro Mask. LiveLux.com. Use code HQ15. If if, uh, if they got a sale going on where you can't use the code, click in the link below and use that. Um, And as always, 
More importantly, now than ever, thank you to Elgato for giving us the gear we need to make great stuff for you. We will see you next week.